Hello everyone. In the previous episodes, you have seen how did the British East India Company come to India for trading and eventually took control of the provinces like Bengal, Bihar and Orissa. In this episode, we will analyze the process of expansion of the company rule in India as well as the policies and strategies adopted by the British to annex different kingdoms. A careful look at the process of annexation of Indian states by the company from 1757 to 1857 reveals two key aspects. The first aspect is that the company rarely launched a direct military attack on an unknown territory. And the second is that used a variety of political, economic and diplomatic methods before annexing the kingdoms. Now, let us consider these strategies of the company closely. After the Battle of Baksar in 1764, the company appointed residents in Indian states. The residents were the senior British officials posted in the capitals of princely states. They were the political or economic agents and the job was to serve the interest of East India Company. Through these residents, the company official began to interfere in the affairs of the Indian states. They tried to decide who was to be the successor of the king and who was to be appointed in administrative posts. The company forced the Indian states to sign a subsidiary alliance. According to the terms of this alliance, Indian rulers had to accept a British resident in their state. They were not allowed to have independent armed forces. The company would protect the states, but the rulers had to pay for the forces kept by the company. And if the rulers failed to make their payments, a part of the territory was taken away as penalty. So in reality, by signing a subsidiary alliance, an Indian state virtually signed away its independence. The cost of British subsidiary forces was very high and beyond the paying capacity of these states. In 1800, Nizam of Hyderabad gave part of his territory to the company in lieu of cash payment for the subsidiary forces. The Nawab of Awadh was forced to give half of his kingdom to the company in 1801. The company resorted to direct military confrontation when it found a threat to its political and economic interests. This can be illustrated with the case of the southern Indian state of Mysore. Mysore Kingdom had grown in strength under the powerful rulers like Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. Hyder Ali was the commander-in-chief of the Mysore King Krishna Raja Wadayar II. He became the de facto ruler of Mysore as Sarvadikari or chief minister. He ruled from 1761 to 1782. He offered strong anti-colonial resistance against the military advances of the British East India Company. After the death of Hyder Ali, his elder son Tipu Sultan took the charge of the large kingdom of Mysore bordered by 
Krishna river in the north, eastern ghats in the east and Arabian sea in the west. This Tipu Sultan was popularly known as Tiger of Mysore. Mysore controlled the profitable trade of the Malabar coast where the company purchased pepper and cardamom. In 1785, Tipu Sultan stopped the export of sandalwood, pepper and cardamom through the ports of his kingdom. He did not permit the local merchants to do their trade with the company. Moreover, he established a close relationship with the French in India and modernized his army with their help. The British were furious. The company considered Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan as a threat to his political and economic interests in southern India. Therefore, it wanted to crush them. The company fought four battles with Mysore and these are known as Anglo-Mysore Wars that spread over three decades of 18th century from 1767 to 1799. In the two battles fought in 1766 and 1780, Hyder Ali defeated the British and occupied almost the whole of Karnatic. After Hyder Ali's death, the war was carried on by Tipu Sultan. Tipu never signed a subsidiary treaty with the British. Even when he lost half of his territories to the British in 1792. Only in the last battle of Sirangapatam, the company could ultimately win a victory against Mysore. That too in an alliance with the Nizam of Hyderabad. Tipu was killed at his capital, Sirangapatnam, in a brief but fierce war in 1799. The half of Tipu's territories was divided between the British and their Ali Nizam. The reduced kingdom of Mysore was placed under the Wadiyars from whom Hyder Ali had seized power. A subsidiary alliance was imposed on Mysore, making it complete dependency of the British. The subsidiary alliance system was extremely advantageous to the British to expand their rule in India. This system helped the British to maintain a large army at the coast of Indian states, to fight wars away from their own territories, to control the defense and foreign relations of Indian states, and keep a powerful army in the land of the allies and use it for annexing the kingdoms whenever required. So, in this episode, you have learnt about how did the British East India Company expanded control by imposing a subsidiary alliance on the Indian states like Hyderabad and Awadh. It also used a direct military attack to annex the Kingdom of Mysore. In the next episode, we will further analyze the aggressive policies of the company to expand its power over the Indian states. Thank you.